This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey everybody, my name is Mike Hermes and welcome to my channel. Well guys, today we're going to do something uh, special. We're going to do some detail work, okay? I usually do tutorials where I try to do a full model or try to do an entire workflow. Uh, but that usually uh, ends up in, you know, very long videos. And I want to kind of cut that back to... Uh, you know, more uh, topic oriented videos, okay? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna create a, a, a worn and faded text effect on textures that you can apply to your model. So things just looked aged, you know, and that adds to realism. So that's what we're gonna do. So uh, let's jump in and have some fun, here we go. So uh, instead of uh, modeling a complete object from uh, start to finish, uh, I decided that it would probably be better to focus on more detailed uh, stuff that you can apply to your own models. So the videos will be a bit shorter and you can just get to it, okay? So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this effect that we got in front of us on this crate. And you can see that the text on the wood has been faded in certain areas due to age, use, and so forth. For example, down here. And that's the effect that I'm gonna show you how to create, okay? Now, just by comparison, if we just jump over to this file here, you can see that this looks absolutely horrible. And that's what we wanna get away from, all right? So in order to demonstrate this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just uh, close this out and we'll close this out as well. And we're just gonna go in and we're gonna open up a plain wood texture file that we got right here. And I'll just, uh, let's see, what's the size of this image here? Uh, it's fairly small. Let's get a slightly bigger one, hang on. Hey guys, this is uh, much better. It's much uh, larger as well. So this is gonna be our base text. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a PNG file to this uh, wood texture here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna apply a new layer by hitting on that new layer button down there. Make sure you're on that new layer. And then we're gonna go up to file, place embedded. And I found this um, beer logo online and we're gonna place it on top. Now, as you can see, this if this would be on a piece of wood, it would look brand new and you know freshly painted and so forth, and that's exactly what we do not want. So first of all, uh, just uh, drag this in slightly, just to make it a little bit smaller. We're gonna center it, so we know it's in the middle, there we go. And then we're gonna hit enter to complete that placement, okay? Now, there are a couple of things you can do here. One that I uh, typically start with is make sure I have my text layer selected. And then I'm going to bring down the opacity a little bit. Not too much. You know, if you go way, way down and it's really faint, we don't want that. But let's see, we'll do... We don't want it to be completely transparent. So we just want to be able to see that wood. Okay, so I'm at 70%, so I guess that's all right, cool. But what I specifically want in this case is I want to have some wear in certain areas only, okay? So I don't want this to be applied to the whole thing, just in certain areas. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna make sure that I have that layer selected, and then I'm gonna go down here to layer mask. And when I create that, this pops up over here. And with that selected, I am going to make sure that I'm on the right hand here. I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to make sure that I got a good size. And let's do a little test here. Because of the black color that I have here, when I click and drag, and I'll just show you over that S up here, for example, you see that in certain areas are fading out. Okay. Now, obviously, that's exactly what we want. I'm not going to go nuts on this. Let's do that. Okay. That's a good start. Then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to see if I can apply a certain uh, type of dirt layer on top of this. So let's uh, pick that up. Hang on. Okay, guys. So we're back. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of okay with uh, the level of um, um, you know, transparency or you know age here. So I'm gonna go in and create a new layer. And then I'm gonna go in to file and uh, place embedded once again. 
and I'm going to use this grunge file that I found. <clears throat> And you can kind of place that on top of your object. You can rotate it if you like. It's too dark right now, but you know, we'll just make sure it's placed correctly. We'll hit enter. And then with that layer selected, we're going to decrease the opacity. We just want to have kind of a faint dirt to it. Let's do that. Okay. I'm okay with that. Let's hit enter. Now let's say that this is all good to go. Uh, what I'll do next is I will uh, shift select all of these layers. I'll right click and go to merge layers. And then I'm gonna go to file, save as, and let's save this as a, uh, let's see, let's do a target file here. And we'll call this uh, texture final. Okay, then let's just save this out on our desktop. Uh, let's see, that's fine. And then we're gonna do next, excuse me. Sorry about that. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this image and we are going to adjust it. We're gonna go to uh, black and white. Hit okay. And uh, let's see, we'll tweak that a little. I'm going to go to adjustments, brightness and contrast. I'm going to increase the brightness quite a bit. Contrast a little bit as well. We'll hit OK. And I will use that as a specular file. So file, save as. I'll save that as a target as well. And we'll call this specular. OK, so we got our texture, we got our specular. There we go. And then what I want to do next is I want to create a normal map. Now, depending on whether you have Quixel or not, you can use Quixel, um, but uh, there's a lot of software out there that you can easily use to, to turn a texture file into a normal map. I think uh, Crazy Bump is still around. Um, I believe uh, Filter Forge can do it. Uh, there are plugins for Photoshop, but I'm going to use uh, Quixel, okay? So I'm going to open up Endu, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'll try to convert it straight on. Actually, I will not, because I want to have a little bit more control over what happens here. So I'm going to go to Photo Normal Presets, and I'm going to select Full Spectrum and Apply to Active Document. Okay, it's going to build a bunch of stuff. We'll just uh, give that a sec. Shouldn't take too long. I'll just uh, pause while it's busy. Okay, there you have it. Well, as you can see, it's uh, quite uh, over the top. So we're gonna start to bring down these values. The extreme is gonna go way down. The huge is gonna go way down. The large as well, the medium large. And as we move, towards medium it's starting to look a little bit more acceptable uh, okay medium small we'll bring that back and as you can see we're starting to get closer to where we want to be okay I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this all right let's say that this is what we want okay so we're going to go to file and uh, save as and we'll save this as a target as well on our desktop and we will call this our normal okay and save that out and save that out All right now what I want to do is I want to show you the end result of this stuff uh, for that we need a model obviously so we're quickly gonna jump into uh, uh, Maya to make a simple plane so I can project this stuff on it so that said hang on okay here we are in Maya we're gonna take a simple polygon plane Hit R to scale that out. And we'll hit Control A. So we can go into the attribute editor and bring the subdivision level down to one. Okay. And then we can push this in a little bit. Now you could apply your, um, your maps here if you would like. And actually, 
Uh, I'm going to do it in Marmoset, but before I do that, I'll do it here for those of you who don't have Marmoset so you can see how that works. Okay, so we got this. We don't really need to UV this because the default should be fine. So we're going to go to UV and UV editor. And there you go. No worries there. So we're going to right click assign new material. We're going to go with a um, let's do a blend. Okay. And then we're going to go in and next to the color tab, we're going to select file folder, go to our, uh, let's see, there we go. There's our texture. Let's turn on this little guy here so we can see it. And then what we can do is we can go in and go to our blend. We're going to go to our bump map section. We're going to select a file. And we're going to change bump map to tangent space normal. We're going to go up to file to look for our normal file. And there he is. Okay. And then let's see. That actually doesn't look bad at all. Uh, we're going to go to our specular slot right there. Select file folder and specular. There we go. And without even applying any additional lighting, this is our end result. Okay. So that said, let's uh, jump into Marmoset and we'll load it up there and see how that works. Okay. Hang on. Hi right, guys, here we are. Um, let's see if I exported my model out of Maya. I'm not sure. Hang on. Okay. So we're back in Maya. Sorry about that. We're going to select our object. We're going to go to file export selection. I took off the textures and so forth. We're going to go to our desktop and I'll call this uh, plane as an FBX. Export selection. There we go. And let's jump back into Marmoset. Alrighty. So we're going to go to File and Import Model. We're going to select our plane. And just to prove to you that it's there, I'm just going to rotate a little bit. There we go. I chose a background. I'm not sure if we're going to keep this one, but so far, not too bad. We're going to click on a uh, default new material. We're going to go to the normal map slot. We're going to plug in our normal. We're going to go to our albedo, which is our color or texture. There we go. Then we're going to go to our specular map and take this guy. And now that we have all of that plugged in, we're going to left click and drag our material and drop it onto our model. Okay. Now this is what you get so far. And what you can now decide to do is to play with the settings a little bit. But what I specifically want to show you guys is the area up here where we kind of faded that S let's uh, bring this gloss back quite a bit. And the specularity as well. Okay. Don't want to get too close. Okay, you see that that area is faded there. That's exactly what we were going for. I'll bump that up just a little bit because it kind of looks cool. And that is all there is to it. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can render this guy out. I'm just going to tweak the light a little bit. Let's see. I'm trying to bring in some bright light. Okay, cool. And then let's just render this guy out. Okay, so this looks all good. And what we'll do is hit this guy. Okay. All right, well, that's all there's to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you got any requests or comments, please let me know. And if you go to the details below, you will find the link to the uh, MH Tutorials Hangout group. Bunch of people there sharing ideas, their work and so forth. So uh, if you want to join, that would be cool. Okay. Well, that said, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.